locked the house up and I was sitting outside and I was sobbing to myself waiting for this ambulance and two torches came down the drive and I said, what's your name and who are you and are you, you Jasmine? And I was absolutely terrified and there were two policemen that had been called to make sure that I was safe for the ambulance to come because I'd been self-harming. Now I understand why, but there could be possibly better ways of handling that, like telling me the police would have come, or I don't know, anything, but that was awful because I thought I was in trouble, I thought they were going to charge me for something. It was terrible. My name is Jasmine. I live with a mental illness. This is my experience. It's sort of emotional, I think. So sometimes I'll paint something from a picture and it's very complicated and that is very distracting and soothing. Sometimes I'll paint something which I don't know what it's gonna be. I want these colors and I slap them on the canvas and then it might turn into a phoenix or something. And there is a part of the painting and the drawing which is cathartic. It helps sometimes even with the um, post-trauma symptoms as well. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. About four years ago, I started to remember events from my childhood which I'd suppressed. Um, these came back as flashbacks. The hardest part of having a mental illness for me is having to deal with my children because my illness prevents me from doing things like going to school, sports days and things. Um, I have flashbacks where I can lash out because I think somebody's coming to me, which is the children notice and they don't want to sit near me. Um, my daughter is actually very, very good now at telling me when I need to go home. When we'll go shopping and she'll say, now we're going home. Now, mum, you're going home. You're not well, you need to go to sleep. Um, and it's awful to have somebody say that. And then she said to me one day when I was having a flashback, um, I'm just going to sit over here. I'm still here, but I just don't want you to hit me. And she was trying to be supportive and um, it just breaks your heart. Before my first attempt at suicide, I'd received a letter from my mother who was one of the people that abused me as a child. I'd moved out from living with my ex and Christmas was coming up and I was supposed to be well and have a Christmas party and it was just impossible. The flashbacks were getting worse, the depression and anxiety were extreme. I decided that I was going to actually take an overdose. I felt totally calm and I felt, felt peace for the first time in such a long time. And then I went um, to my medicine cabinet and took a variety of drugs. I was supposed to ring my ex because I was going to give him a lift the next day and say, look, I can't do that, I'm not well. But the drugs were a lot quicker to work than I'd realised. I was unconscious before I knew it and um, he found me the next morning and he thought that I was dead and they took me down to the emergency. When I got to the hospital, they put me onto a psychiatric ward and eventually I was discharged. I was there for a week. When I went back home, I felt as if nothing was any different. There was nobody going to check on me and I just craved that feeling of complete peace. They ask you all the questions when you're in the hospital. Do you live with somebody? Do you, do you have any support? Do you have any assistance? And if you say no to everything, they still don't do anything. So I don't even see why they ask. Initially, I went to get treatment from a counsellor. 
um, who was supposed to be good with childhood problems. Um, after a few sessions she started to try and convert me to God, which was a little bit insulting. <laughs> so I moved on to see a psychologist in the city. Um, she was also not really equipped to deal with the severity of the flashbacks and the depth of um, distress that I was feeling at the time. I went to see a GP who immediately gave me a letter to go to the emergency department and the psychiatrist there said that they didn't know why I'd been sent up which made me quite angry and I actually lost my temper and started shouting at them which is very, very unlike me. <laughs> which succeeded in me being drugged, sedated because I was clearly not right and then I was later referred to see the psychiatrist that I see now who is actually very, very good. At that time I was just seeing my psychiatrist once a week and he was the only person that I would see. I also had my children to take to school and everything but with the children I'm trying to hide the symptoms and pretend everything's okay. So it was very very stressful. From the healthcare professionals I didn't get any support or any uh, introduction to anything else. It was actually a friend who had worked as a mental health nurse for an organisation who introduced me to a worker and basically they did a botched referral so that I could get help from her. One day a week she would come round to my house for three or four hours and we would just sit outside and talk and talk about all the stuff that was going on, the bad stuff, the past, the kids. She started to ask me what my interests were and what kind of hobbies should we look at and what are we going to do, you know? I told her that I was interested in learning about art and gardening and various things. So she found me a place um, through another organisation where you can go on respite for a week. And I was really nervous. I didn't know if I wanted to go or not. But after the first day, it was fantastic. And the group was about art. So we went to the art gallery and we had an art teacher come in to show us how to do a picture. And it was just fantastic. That made a massive difference because up until then I had nothing in the future to aim for and then suddenly I had um, every Wednesday I had to be somewhere to learn something. That fueled me to learn it at home as well so then you know the feeling spread. <laughs> The group that I go to currently um, have helped me to do things that I didn't think that I could do. The first one was to learn how to paint. The second thing that I learned I could do was to hold um, a relaxation group and I actually ran it and talked to people, stood up and talked to them and presented information which was quite mind-blowing for me. I didn't think I would ever do that. And the latest thing that I've achieved was to put some art into an exhibition for Mental Health Week, which I'm quite pleased about. <laughs> We're going to visit soon. <laughs>